Okay, so we've learned to figure out if an item exists in a list. And we can create a list from our spreadsheet. So our spreadsheet here is user data. It's looking under sheet one, looking under a column called email address. Here's the specific sheet. So it's user data, sheet one, in the column email address. So when it looks for this, it returns one simple fact, yes or no, does that item exist in that list? Well, we need to figure out what to do with that information. We want to be able to look in our spreadsheet under this email address and associate it with a password. So how do we do that? We've got to remember where in the spreadsheet it finds that item. So right here, after we say, yes, we found the item, we're going to need to remember some stuff. So how do we do that? We do that with variables. We're going to create a new variable and I'm going to just call it index. We want to remember the index, which is where in the spreadsheet it finds that piece of data so that we can reference it and find the password. So how do we do that? We're going to go under variables and we're going to set the variable we just created. So our variables initialized here and we're going to set our variable to it's the index variable. There's a function for list called in list. The way it works is it searches for the first occurrence of a string. Remember, we're searching for this string here. So I'll just duplicate that box and put it here. And we don't want to use this ABC list. We want this list. So we know it already exists in the list. Sorry, I plugged it in the wrong spot. There we go. So we know from doing this, it exists in the list. Now we want to get the first occurrence of that from the list. And it returns an index. The index is just where in the list it is. And then we're going to take that information and figure out what our password is. So, so let's just see if that works. So let's set our label here to the value of our variable so we see what it looks like. So we're setting the variable equal to the first occurrence of finding that text in this spreadsheet. Let's take what we've just put into this variable and change our label so we can see what it's giving us back to design, go back to preview. Let's put nonsense first. It should say no in our label. Now let's put something we know exists. Push our button, says yes, and it returns one. One must mean it's the first um, row. Let's try the next one, which is jenny at gmail.com. See what it returns when we do that. Gotta spell it right says yes, it's at index two. Okay, so now we know what kind of data it's returning. We can use that to get more data back out of our spreadsheet. We want to check now what the password is for these, and we want to make sure it matches what's typed. But for now, let's just get it. I'll leave that as an exercise to you. Instead, let's change our label to whatever's in the password field. So how do we do that? Let's go back to blocks. And here, instead of setting it to the index, let's just pull that over here for just a minute. So we're going to go into lists, and lists has a function to get an item from a list that's at a certain given number. So we'll grab this over here. We'll drop it here. Let's see how this works. So right now we've got A and B. If I say get number one, it should return um, a, and if I put number two, it should return B. So let's find out. I'm just going to say preview. We're going to put uh, matt at gmail.com because we know that's part of the database. We'll hit the button. It says yes. It says A. Let's go back to edit, back to blocks, change that to number two. And let's test it this way. It's always good to just chain things one at a time, test them. 
matt at gmail.com. Push our button. It'll say yes. Then it should say B. Okay, that's exactly what we expected. It's returning the second item from this list. But we don't want to look at this list. So let's pull this out. We can throw it away. Let's pull in this list. So I'll duplicate it, drop it here. And we don't want to get index two. We want to get whatever the number is in our variable we called index. So what it's going to do when I type the username, it'll print the password out to the screen. So let's try it again. Back to design, back to preview. That's right, matt at gmail.com. It'll say yes, and then it'll change. Haha. <laughs> so not quite. We've made a little error, but it's giving us back the same email address, so that's not necessarily a bad thing. We just need to say we don't want the email address. We want the password. So we come back in here, back to design, back to freeview, type matt at gmail.com, push our button, it says yes, then there's the password. Type Jenny, push the button, there's the password is 12345, what a great password. So you can see it's pulling it from here. Let's try bob at hotmail.com. Push our button, it says yes, and there's Bob's password. Now really, in a user login and password situation, you want your first, sorry, you want your username, you want your password, and we're not gonna print the user's password to the screen, that's not a good idea. Really, we should be checking it to make sure it matches and allowing our user to log in.